Hey, 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 what's up, guys? Today, we're going to talk about coding interview prep. Yep. So today, we're going to talk about how to prepare for a coding interview. I got this question the other day while I was on my Facebook group that I share with Dylan, or Dylan shares with me, Coding Tutorials 360. If you look at the description below, I have links to that coding group that you guys can join if you wanna take a look at it. Also, before I get started, Udemy is having a sale, of course. Uh, it's only for the next couple of days, so school is starting. You can get courses for $10 if you're brand new or $12 if you're a returning user, so check that out. Put the links below. I do make a couple bucks if you click on them. So if you have, hey, what's up? If you guys are coming into the chat room, just uh, say hi. If you have any questions, I'll be answering some questions at the end of the stream and and while we're going through it. So we're gonna talk about interview prep. Now, I want this channel to be more about JavaScript and development and things like this, but I think this really helps out because you'll find out for a lot of different interviews that people are looking for developers that can answer these algorithm type questions. Now there's there's a definitely different types of interviews. A lot of inter, a lot of times when you apply for a web development job or a job as a JavaScript developer, you may get a take home test, which kind of just sees how your skills are. And then when you actually get into the office, you might actually get a algorithm test too. So it just depends on the places. If you're applying for major corporations like Microsoft or Facebook or LinkedIn, you are going to, and Google, you're definitely going to get a algorithm type question. And these are things that you just need to practice over and over again. So I came up with a list of some resources. What's up, McKinley? What's up, guys? Uh, if you don't know what coding is, Nabraj, then you're in the wrong place. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm gonna go over these resources on which, where you can learn to do interview prep. And let's take a look. I gave it sneak peek up. You saw it right when I started the stream here. So here is my browser right there. <laughs> and you can see here from the, uh, I have a bunch of tabs open here. So really most people who start practicing for coding interviews either start in two places. And what I'm talking about, like these are whiteboarding like algorithm type questions, which I really think in the long term makes you a better programmer. Uh, so. You can see from here, we have Leet Code. This is one of the places a lot of people start off with. And it's simple, you can sign up, it's free. They have literally thousands and thousands of problems. You can take a look here. And you can see like the difficulties. I've actually done a few of them just for fun. So to sum, add to numbers, things like that. You can click on any of them. You can look at the description, there's hints then you can actually do the solution and you can see how other people did it. So this isn't perfect by any stretch of the means, but if you get used to just doing these type of problems, I would do all the easies first and then start doing some mediums. You can get really good algorithms, but you're kind of just throwing stuff out there and saying, you're, this doesn't really give you a plan of what to study. You're just kind of throwing yourself out there and seeing what you can do. So that is one definite place. A lot of people also recommend the Cracking the Coding Interview book. This is, uh, if you don't know, this is a book that's been one of the number one top sellers for coding and programming books for years. And they keep on putting new rev uh, versions out, revisions out. I think version six is the latest, sixth edition as it says right here. And what this does is there's about half the book is just like basic explanations of what type of questions you'll see in these coding interviews and also gives you a lot of like prep stuff like how do you how do you approach an interview like what should you wear when you go to the interview how should you behave so there's definitely some soft skills involved but then it goes into each chapter like what is dynamic programming what are these different search binary searches what are these different search algorithms and then the second half of the book which I've read this before is just interview problems. So there's 189, it says here, and that's kind of where the bulk of the book is. That's where, where the real meat is. So in each one of these sections, at the end of each chapter, they have a number of problems and they have like medium level and then hard level, medium and easy and hard. 
So that way you can learn like what a depth first threat, depth first search is, and then you can do some problems with it at the end of the book. And it's it's pretty comprehensive. I mean, if you can get through all those problems uh, problems in that book, you will be well on your way of passing any technical coding interview. So that is one one thing that you should keep an eye out for. Oh, so you have an interview, Chio says, on in the chat room on Friday. Cool, cool. So the other book that's kind of often ignored. Hey, sup, Victor. Welcome to the channel. So another book that's often ignored is The Elements of Programming Interview. And if you don't know, this actually book is has three or four different versions of it. They have it in Python. They have it in Java. I think they even have like a C Sharp version or C, C++ version. So you can get this book. It's a little bit higher level, a little bit more technical. It's a little bit more harder to uh, grasp than Cracking the Coding Interview, but it's definitely well worth reading, especially if you've gone through Cracking the Coding Interview and you want a little bit more insight into some of these problems that you might see. Uh, I, I definitely skimmed through it. It's great. They have a lot of interview problems. Some people prefer this over Cracking the Coding Interview. It does give you kind of a pace of where you should start. It gives you uh, right in the first chapter when I was reading it, there was a, like a column, there was like a matrix where it told you, okay, if you want to get good, you need to read sections five, six, and seven, and then do this. And they had like different study plans for you. And they even said, you should study every day at this time and do this. So it really kind of walks you through how to do these algorithm problems and when you should do them and why you should do them. So I really like that in it. So that, that would be another great resource. A lot of people like HackerRank. Um, I haven't used it myself, but you can complete these challenges and I believe companies can actually see you and screen you via the challenges on here. So that would be another great choice. Coding Tutorials 360, my buddy Dylan, he has been doing a series on code fights. So he's been doing tons and tons of examples on how to get through these interviews through using code fights. So they're another way. It's a little bit nicer. I would say it's definitely looks better than leak code for code fights because it, the, just the way they, they do their editor and everything and it, and it kind of walks you through it a little bit easier. I kind of prefer them if you're like brand new. Sometimes if you just jump into leak code, you're going to have to have a lot of discipline to go through those problems and complete them without looking up solutions. Uh, the code fights definitely feels more like a game when you're going through it, uh, especially when you go through the algorithm stuff on it. Another one, uh, hey, congratulations McKinley for doing well in your interview. Just said he did well in his interview. So Pramp.com, I actually had talked to the owner of this site a while ago and a uh, really cool guy. So Pramp.com is another interview prep site. It's free and the way it works is you sign up for it and they give you a calendar of times and dates and you put in all your availability and then you'll get an email usually pretty quickly. Actually, after you put the time and dates in, it'll try to match you right away. If they can't match you, then I believe later you'll get an email. But it, they find other people that have also gone onto the service and they'll match you with other another person. And then you, you can show up at that time and the other person shows up and you have this code editor window in front of you and then you also have a video of the, the other person. And it's split up into two half hours. The first half hour, randomly either you or him will do the interview so you'll have the the interview question and answer in front of you and then you'll pretend like you're giving a mock interview to that person and then that person has to go into the code editor and come up with a solution and then you can kind of guide them and tell them what to do and then after the half hour ends you know if you know you, the other person may or may not have gotten the the problem right and the 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 code editor isn't sophisticated enough to actually run the problem. It just you just write it. Then it switches, and the other person you become the interviewer, or you become the interviewee, and the other person becomes the interviewer. And then you have to answer a problem. And so you kind of get that feeling like you're in a real interview somewhere with somebody, because you're having to try to figure out a problem and write it in real time in a code editor. And it feels a little bit. I don't know. It's a little bit, could be a little stressful if you're not used to that. At the end of the interview, after the hours ended, and usually you try to keep it to an hour, you don't want to go past it. 
you get a, like a little form so you can grade the other person like how well they did on the interview problem how well uh, they understand things in, in general how helpful they were as an interviewer how helpful they were as an interviewee so you kind of rate each other at the end and then Pramp um, gives you like your report card at the end so you can kind of go back through and see which problems you had problems on you can see their feedback for you to see how well they thought you did and then you can also if if one person doesn't show up because that sometimes happens you'll go you'll be scheduled for five o'clock in the afternoon and that other person never shows up you can give them a negative rating and if you get negative ratings you can't schedule any more uh, interviews mock interviews you only get about three or four credits a week at least last time i used it and that was a couple months ago a few months ago and if you abuse a system and you don't show up for any of the interviews then you actually get penalized for it so question here for an ibition how many interviews did you do before getting your job so <laughs> right out of college i uh, i thought i knew everything and I went to an uh, interview at GE, General Electric, that was near my house. Well, it was actually about an hour and a half drive away, so it was kind of a long drive. And I had this type of interview where it was like a coding interview. I had a whiteboarding part. I had a lunch with the team members, and I did awful. <laughs> so that was like the first time. I mean, I should probably do a video on how awful I did on that interview. And I just didn't realize, like, you really do need to study for your coding interviews. I mean, some people are just going to be natural at it, and they're just going to knock it out the first time, but I wasn't that type of person. So I think I went through maybe, like, two or three, and then I found a, a job, and then I've kind of bounced around different jobs since then. Um, and But I've been at my same job for the last eight years, so I haven't been in the coding market for a while. I've done... I'll admit, in the last eight years, I have gone on interviews from some things that have popped up. You know, I love the work I'm in now, and they haven't worked out, but it's just been a few, um, and I haven't changed jobs since, but you never know. You know, I, I talked to Dylan from Coding Tutorials 360. He just did a video a while ago, and he said he did, like, he almost finished his, his CS degree, but he didn't have a degree. And he was just getting into web development and he literally sent out hundreds of resumes before he got his job. So it's not, don't don't think that just because it only took me two or three to get my job that that's normal. It's literally, it sometimes takes 10, 20, 30 different interviews, especially if you're brand new. Don't expect to, to land that job the first time. It, it gets a little discouraging if you're never getting it, but you'll start seeing patterns. You'll start seeing patterns on how people interview, the take home tests you get, the algorithm questions you're asked. I mean, after you get asked like the linked list question the third time, you may you may be an expert in it. Also, I did an interview with Nicholas Spinoza about uh, he is an engineer in New York. He came out of a coding boot camp, and he said that he he did the same thing. I think they prepared him. I think it was Hack Reactor. They prepared him quite a bit for interviews right after his coding boot camp, and he had it. And I I think he probably went through like ten or even like. 10 interviews, but he started seeing inter seeing patterns too when he started going on more interviews. So yeah, definitely pramp.com, check that out. And there's actually, I think there's even a website out there. I can't remember. If I find it, I'll put it in the show notes or the description below where people like who failed coding interviews like commiserated together and they put like little questions like, I failed the Microsoft interview, but now I'm at Google. So it, it happens. I always mention Interview Cake because they seem, I've only heard good things about them. They are a kind of a, a, you're gonna have to pay for this, but they offer a course where they, they also have a free email course too, but they tell you how to get better at inter coding interviews. You said, and they have a little description. It's $199 here. And they give you, let's see here, I think it's 45 real mock interview questions. So it's a whole course. They go, they think these are the best 45 that you should know. And they walk you through the whole course on on what you should do, and and I've heard good things. You know, I've even heard of like junior devs that just studied their butt off getting jobs on Microsoft and LinkedIn just because they went through these type of courses. I, you know, one thing if you're not in the U.S., I've heard a lot of these Indian developers. They'll be they'll come right out of the university and they'll get they'll Microsoft and Facebook and Google 
they'll be at their campuses, representatives, and they'll get like 20 of them. And these Google engineers, at least one I was talking to, are, are these Indian engineers that are trying to get jobs at Google and everything. They're really good. And they would form study groups. And all they would do is do these, these algorithm problems, like over like hundreds of them. And they'd all work together. And then when they got the interviews, they would fly them all over you know, to either Seattle or Mountain View. And they would be really well prepared. While a lot of the U.S. college students would come out and didn't realize they needed to do so much prep for these interviews, these top univer- these top companies, and they would lose out to these Indian engineers because they were really gaming the system. At least that that was a story I heard from one one Indian engineer I was talking to a while back. But you're you uh, you may disagree with that. Let me see here. Are there linked lists in JavaScript? Microsoft is full of Indians. <laughs> well, I think uh, if you look at the statistics, I mean, I don't know the, them off the top of my head, but you know, there's a lot of um, diversity in the white. Well, I should say there's a lot of there's not a lot of male female diversity in tech, but there's there's a lot of Indians. There's a lot of people of uh, different ethnic backgrounds, white people. So that's that definitely happens. And you can make linked lists in JavaScript. There's ways to do it. I think I even did a video on it. And I want to give a shout out to this book for John Sanmez. I think I'm going to wrap this up here soon. It's 16 minutes in. The Complete Software Developer's Career Guide. He actually gives a bonus in this book. Uh, if you buy the book, and and I put links by the by the way to all these books in the description below. They're affiliate, by the way. If you buy the book, you get a hundred and ninety-five dollars in free videos and things like that. You can, if you do that, uh, if you buy the book and you get that free hundred ninety-five dollars in, in stuff, there's a whole video series on how to get a job as a web developer or how to get a job in tech and he even talks about algorithm questions. So, and he actually has a chapter on it too, a few chapters. So I would say this is another good resource to go and learn about algorithms and testing or algorithms. And he mentions testing too. So check out these books and resources for your technical interviews. If you guys have any questions, Code Wars is awesome. Yeah. Uh, Code Wars, definitely, I didn't mention that, but you could check out that. There's also a couple of really good Facebook groups. Um, actually, Gail, the one that has the Cracking the Coding interview book, she is a part of a couple of those. I believe if you look up some Facebook groups for interview prep, um, she actually posts on some of them. And so she talks a little bit. She used to at least to, used to. So there's a few Facebook groups, but we talk about that in, in uh, Dylan's group too. Free Code Camp, yeah, that's another one, good good one, Aaron. If I haven't gone through it all, I don't know how well they do the algorithm section of it, but I know the rest of it is is pretty good. Um, if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one mentorship or anything like that, I am trying to do a little bit more of that myself. So, you know, feel free to contact me. My information is in the description below. So that is just a few resources. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here. It's getting a little bit long. So thank you for watching this quick video on resources for top, for uh, technical interviews. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button. Or if you really like it, click that little bell button. That really, really helps me. And uh, feel free to share this video with other people that are trying to get a job and looking for resources in the web development community. And they're fearing the evil algorithm type questions that you often get. So take care, guys.